good morning from Las Vegas. It's breakfast time and I know exactly where to go. Wow, no lie. So the Oyster Bar, one of my favorite restaurants here in Las Vegas. If you go to the Palace Station location, there's a line 24 hours a day. But here, I'm the only one eating. And at seven o'clock in the morning, this is probably one of the best breakfasts I'll find in Las Vegas. Mm. Really wanted to try the jambalaya, but I had to go with the pan roast and also a cup of clam chowder. Their clam chowder just stuck full of clam. Add some hot sauce to it. This hot sauce is delicious. Kick your ass hot. I would have to agree. Thank you so much. Welcome, Appreciate enjoy. that, thank you. So the pan rolls is a really creamy tomato stew stuffed with seafood. Finished with a little bit of brandy and inside there's lobster, shrimp, crab, Oh, I missed this so much. Also, this place, you can choose your level of spiciness from zero to 10. It's still early in the morning. Don't want to take it too far, so got an eight. I got one of my favorite yeats here in Las Vegas. So I really wanted to come back here again this time around, but of course, like I said, there's always a line. Did not know they had a second location. This is amazing. I mean, I'm sure this place will be lying on the door when everybody finds out, but I think at least for the next couple of days, it's gonna be some incredible breakfast. No way. Add some rice in here. Mm. Ah, so good, so good, so good. So I've got a few hours before dinner and just walking around downstairs and I see this, Prince Street Pizza. So I had to get a couple slices of the spicy pepperoni. This is the margarita slice. Just looking at it, same thick airy dough with just an overabundance of pepperoni on top. And the pepperoni is all curled into a cup with that little bit of spicy oil on the bottom. Oh, I missed that. I think the Prince Street in New York, the pizza dough has more volume and it's lighter, more melt in your mouth. This one, more compact, a little doughy. I think not as amazing as the original, but still pretty darn good. Margarita slice. All right, this one is just okay. I think a little overly sweet. I should have just got three slices of this. Also got some frozen custard. This is awesome. Really creamy. I mixed cherry and brownie and Oreo. Result, rich, creamy, and crunchy. This feels really good after biting into that spicy pepperoni. So plan for the rest of the night, eat this, go for a run, and then going for a dinner at the newest hotel in Las Vegas, the Fountain Blue. The Fountain Blue, obviously the newest hotel here on the Strip. A lot of my friends here in Vegas recommended that I come and try out their chicken and their blue lobster. And this chicken is, this is wild. It's called the Royal Golden Chicken. And it's 265, I think this is the most expensive chicken in the world. Let's try it out. Also for appetizer, I got a whole cauliflower. Okay, so this is really interesting. Before the chicken and lobster got here cooked, they bring it out to show me the lobster and the chicken. And the chicken looks, it looks like a giant chicken. It's called a golden chicken because they put a golden gloss on this farm-raised chicken. I'm sure that's not why it's over $200, but it's a two-course meal, so I'm excited to see what the two courses are. And also, the blue lobster, it's not one of those blue lobsters that's like one in a million, one in two million. It's not that. It's a French blue lobster, which are very common, and the shells actually turn red as they cook. So this is the roasted cauliflower. It's a whole head of cauliflower sitting on top of goat cheese and shishito herb vinaigrette. Hmm, this is pretty delicious. The cauliflower is soft, has a bit of a smoky flavor to it. The goat cheese is really rich, creamy, and very tangy. The sauce on the side, tiny bit of a kick. It's also citrusy and tangy as well. The texture for both is, is extremely creamy and rich, but the tain is very much balances that out. This is a very interesting dish. I like it. They brought over the lobster claws and it's surrounded by crispy rice, sea grapes, shallots, chives, tomatoes, lemongrass, and then these little beads of lime. 
and they served it with some lettuce. So this is basically, the first course is a lettuce wrap. So take some lettuce, lobster claw meat, and I think this is lime zest inside. Tomatoes, lemongrass, more lime, a little crispy rice, a little bit of the sea grapes, shallots, and chives. This thing is sweet. There's a lot of crunch from the crispy rice to the veg. Lobster claw. Mm, very, very sweet. That is amazingly sweet lobster. They give you uh, some lettuce and also perilla leaves. And the lettuce actually has a bit of bitterness to it, which I don't love. So try the perilla leaves. Mm. I like that a lot better. This tastes like the world's most refreshing lobster salad. The meat is really juicy and sweet. I like the bit of lime zest to, to kind of add a bit of citrus in a slight, slight hint of bitterness. I love the crunch from the veg and the tiny bit of brininess from the sea grapes. I think these are really interesting um, condiments that they surrounded the claw with. It's a very good way to eat a lobster claw. So the first course of the golden chicken has arrived on the table. It's part of the drumstick, he said part of the body of the chicken, and they made this into a laksa. So the top is crispy chili flakes, it looks like. Red pepper, there's sprouts. It looks like egg noodles on the bottom. Wow, this is a really rich bowl of laksa. It has a lot of ingredients. I think this dish itself could feed a couple people. I smell the curry, I definitely smell the chilies. This is a really interesting dish. Very rich and peanutty. Let's get a taste of this golden chicken. Hmm, the chicken's got a good chew to it. Also, I think it's marinated in something. The chicken itself is salty. It's got a roasted flavor to it. I think this dish tastes a lot better when you combine all the elements together, like the veg, the noodles, the chicken, crispy veg to cut down on the richness, and there's definitely some heat. I wish, though, that the noodles were not so soft. Right now it's pretty soggy, so there's not much chew to the noodles. This tastes less like laksa and more like a bowl of peanut noodles. I mean, it tastes good. It's spicy, it's rich, there's a lot of flavors, a lot of textures, but it doesn't really remind me of a laksa. And if you just isolate and taste the chicken itself, it's okay. It's not overly tender, but it's not dry. One thing I do like is the crispy chicken skin that's mixed in here. This is awesome. A little bit of fatty crunch. Mmm. That's really good. Next dish is lobster. So I think if you order the chicken and lobster, I don't know if they're doing this on purpose, but you're getting a chicken dish, then a lobster dish, chicken dish and lobster dish. So I think that's a great way to do it. So you never get bored with any particular dish. It just keeps things interesting. The name of this particular dish is called lobster in a sub. What it really is, is uh, they said it's a uh, lobster tail over paella. And the paella is cooked with coconut milk. There's chorizo, some bell peppers, and the sauce they pour over the lobster tail is chorizo nage. It's basically chorizo gravy with some rendered butter. It pretty much looks like a lobster tail sitting over a risotto. I mean, it looks really good. It smells really good. Yeah, this is my favorite course so far. It's just like a very rich, creamy risotto. The rice is beautifully al dente. The turmeric gives it a very robust flavor. Mmm, chorizo is very nice. A little bit of heat. Mmm. And all that goes great with the succulent sweet lobster. What's also really good about this, they put a lot of crispy toasted rice inside this dish. So every bite you take, you get a little crunch from the bell peppers and a lot of crunch from that toasty rice. Mm. I mean, it's a very rich and heavy dish, but this is fantastic. All right, I think this is the final dish. It's chicken breast, it's breaded, and I think it's roasted, and it's covered in caviar cream with one full can of caviar mixed in. Just like the laksa, this is a very, very, very rich dish. I mean, is it delicious? Yeah, I think that with this much caviar and this caviar cream, which is just really creamy and flavorful. Oh, also, comes with a bowl of shoestring fries. 
This is really good. The chicken is tender right underneath the roasted skin. So there's a lot of complicated flavors in here. And I ate about half the chicken trying to figure out exactly what's under the skin. And it looks like a layer of stuffing right under the skin that they made with the chicken liver. And it's supposed to have some truffle in there as well. Although I don't taste any truffle at all. The chicken itself is very, very tender. The smoked caviar cream on top is again very rich very flavorful it is a very interesting chicken dish and of course every single bite you take you're gonna have a lot of that beautiful briny umami from the caviar so to me i would have to say it's very uniquely delicious i mean is it worth the price tag i think a lot of the price involves that can of caviar the chicken itself doesn't taste anything extraordinary it's not overly juicy or overly tender it's cooked very well but just the golden chicken itself just tastes like any other chicken so i think this dish and the lobster dish they're really not meant to be eaten as a dish for one individual it's meant to be shared among the table so i think that's why both dishes are very decadent one thing these dishes do not lack is flavor i think these dishes are very very representative of Las Vegas. It's extravagant, it's rich, it's fun. This is definitely a once in a lifetime experience for me, but I'm glad I was able to give it a try. And that wraps up another fun-filled food day here in Las Vegas. As always, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.